Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So today we're going to rebuild an engine or at least get an engine running. There's a lot we could choose from. We've got this one that uh, blew a valve guide. We got this one that needs governor work. Uh, this one ran out of oil. But you know what? These are all too easy. So we're going to go out here and find ourselves a real gem. All right, so this is what the junkyard looks like in January. Oh, isn't she a beauty? Isn't she a beauty? It's been sitting out here in the rain and snow for about six months. But I think we can bring it back to life. She's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Probably have water inside the cylinders. Yeah, definitely going to need some work. A few of the parts here. I think there's a carburetor somewhere around here for this. All right, let's get this thing into the garage, eh, Bo? Careful not to break the plastic oil spout here. Yeah, a lot of dirt and mud on the shaft. That's nice. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I think we have compression still. It feels like it. it's stiff. Um, I went ahead and stuffed some rags in the intake manifold holes there. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is just clean this piece of crap up. This is a product called Oil Eater. It's a biodegradable, good for the environment type of degreaser. So I use it every now and then. So we'll let this sit on here for about 10 minutes and then hose it off. Spray a little bit of WD-40 in both sides. And as you can see, I have it uh, wired to my truck battery with a 50 amp uh, charger on here to make sure it turns over. Because so I was having trouble getting it to turn over with just the uh, jumper cables, so I added that charger. All right, let's test this thing out. I'm going to spray a little bit of starting fluid in each side. Let's see if we can make this baby run. Well, I think that's a good sign. It uh, wanted to start. Put a little more starting fluid in here. See what happens. Yeah, I think this engine's good. Let's get into it. And by doing that, hopefully I blew out some of the water that was uh, in the system. And see down in there the valve the valve was a little bit rusty but uh, it's not stuck and the valve in there is a little bit rusty I'll probably clean clean that off a little bit 
with the toothbrush or something. So these are all the parts that came out of that bag that was sitting next to the engine. Looks like we have the uh, the intake manifold, which is good. Nothing's broken. And the carburetor, which uh, didn't have a float bowl, so we're not going to be able to use that. Various nuts and bolts here. And this is your air filter intake. Luckily, I have a brand new carburetor right here. It's an aftermarket one, and you guys know how I feel about that, but we're going to use it anyways. So you'll see on the intake manifold, I'm going to clean this up, of course, but th this here is a rubber uh, gasket. So that's your gasket for your intake manifold. Uh, these are still in place, and I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. If you don't want to reuse them, and you want to buy new ones, go right ahead. Just want to clean off these surfaces a little bit and a little bit of corrosion on there from sitting. So luckily it came with some gaskets. I'm not sure why it has this metal one. Uh, the original carburetor just had a gasket there. Also some of these carburetors have a spacer on this back side. Um, this one didn't have a spacer, it just has a gasket that goes between there and there. So I'm trying to decide if I should just put the one gasket on or if I should put this little thing on. It looks like a little Venturi, if you can see. I think I'm just going to go with a gasket. So you put your intake manifold gasket and your carburetor I'm just gonna go with the one gasket now, I forgot you put these studs in before you put the um, before you put this part on. And to tighten up these studs, you use, well, this is the smallest socket I have. It's a 5 30 seconds. And that's the one you use to put on here and tighten them down. Now not too tight, but tight enough to cinch down on that gasket we put in there. And I always try to tighten evenly. All right, now that we have those tightened up, we can put this on, don't forget the gasket. And that's where these nuts come in. And I use a 7 16 socket to tighten down these nuts. Okay, we still have our gaskets. I think we're ready to go on. These shoulder bolts here are what you use to put the manifold on. We have a couple of linkages we're going to have to deal with. I know this one. I know this linkage here attaches to that. Okay, now I can see what this um, now I can see what this one is for. It's actually supposed to hook up to there, which is the choke mechanism. So I can take off this bracket, put that into place. I'm just going to take this little bracket off so can I can connect the uh, linkage to uh, the choke. Put 
that through there. Now we're good. All right, what next here? On this model, you have two springs, and you can see this big one is attached still. This bottom one goes from that bracket to there. And then this just bolts into place right there, like that. I'm gonna hook up this to that. Don't forget your breather hose, it just plugs into the back there. And then that connects there, of course. I hate aftermarket carburetors. So we're all assembled here. Things seem to be working, except for this uh, throttle linkage. If you look up here, you can see it's actually getting hung up on that piece there. It looks like uh, they made a, took a little chunk out to try and compensate for that, but it's still getting stuck. So I'm going to have to uh, get a file and remove some more of that plastic there. So I just had to move, remove a little bit of that plastic. And now it's not sticking, so I think we're good there. So I see the little vacuum tube that goes to the fuel pump. Uh, it's, it's broken, so the fuel pump won't work. But if I put a fuel line directly into there, uh, yeah, we should be able to have gas to the carburetor and fire this baby up. Let's check it out. All right, folks, so here's the setup. We have an IV bottle above the carburetor so it can gravity feed to it. Got a muffler strapped on here. I have the engine uh, strapped to my table. Let's go ahead and fire this baby up. You could get hurt. I know what's going on. I don't have any power to the fuel solenoid, so it's not opening like it should. So uh, let me hook up some power to that. Man, I gotta rethink this. Oh boy, ay ay ay. Okay, here's the plan. We're gonna put that engine in this beast here. The engine that came out of this one was that one in the garage with the uh, loose valve guide. 
but it's the same it's the same wiring configuration and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and just look it up to here for a quick test scrape some of that stuff off All right. Still a muffler on here. That's good. Uh, now all I need to do is just throw a couple of motor mount bolts in here. Connect some wiring. As I said, I confirmed that the wiring is the same with the engine that came out of here, so snaps together. How nice. Headlight wires. Hook up the starter motor real quick. Probably gonna have to charge the battery in this one. There are the mill bells going off. It's noon in my town. Sure, I'll have to charge the battery. This thing's been sitting a while. Oh, well, hey, looky there. Motor mount bolts. Okay. Motor mount bolts. I'm only putting two bolts in for now. Come on. There we go. That's the one beach is in place now. You can see it's time to bolt this muffler up here. This is the type of bolt you use. And this little cover is part of it too. Let's see, how does this go? Found one, this should work. Yeah, that'll work. Just have to make sure that your fuel source is higher than the carburetor because I'm bypassing the fuel pump right now. And that component there is why it wouldn't run on the bench because that's the fuel solenoid and it cuts off fuel supply. I'm going to turn the key now on this lawnmower. Can you hear that click? That's the fuel solenoid activating, so I think we're good there now. Let's see if this battery is charged up enough to fire this thing up. Set the set the parking brake over here. That way, I don't have to sit on it to start it. Like it is a weak battery.
I'm draining all the gas out of the gas tank here. Figured I would show you guys uh, my continued progress on this thing. I'm going to keep this engine in this machine and get this machine up and going. So, got the little rubber piece here. This is what activates your fuel pump. This just slides on and then pokes into place. Once the fuel tank drains all out, I will replace this fuel filter here and uh, hook it up to the fuel pump. And then hook the fuel pump to the carburetor. So luckily we're in for some dry weather for a few days, so I'm just going to leave this gas cap off and let the uh, fuel tank vent and let any, any moisture that's in there evaporate out. Finally stop draining. You can replace these fuel lines if you want to, but I'm not gonna. They still look good. Make sure the arrow is going the correct way. this up uh, right like so need to let this uh, gas tank air out for quite a bit though just to make sure all the water's out of there there we go I did already put the um, pulleys back on. I should have filmed it, but it was a little difficult. Basically, there was a top pulley for the drive system, and then here's your electric clutch for your blade belt. And one bolt holds it all on. So here we are. Uh, I decided the gas tank was dried out enough, so I filled it up with gas. As you can see, it's not yet in the fuel filter because the fuel filter is higher than the gas tank. That's what the fuel pump does. It pumps gas from the gas tank into the carburetor. All right, boys. So watch this. You'll get to see the uh, fuel pumping into the fuel filter here once I start turning the, in the engine over. Give it a little choke. It's got to fill up the float bowl, remember, so it'll take a little while. I think our next step is to take this thing for a test ride. Well, I decided I want to drive it, so uh, let me move some crap out of the way here. Oh. Prepare for launch. <laughs> Give it a little choke.
I gotta make some time here. Just had to pull over for that guy. Things are driving pretty good.